December 7, 1941. 353 Japanese planes launch a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. In two waves, they destroy eight battleships, wipe out airfields, and kill over 2,400 Americans. But what if the U.S. had one weapon from the future? Just one. Would it be enough to change history? What if Pearl Harbor had a CRM? CRM, a radar-guided minigun system that fires 75 rounds per second. In 2025, it's used to defend bases from incoming rockets and drones. But today, we drop it into 1941 right onto the docks of Pearl Harbor. As the first wave approaches, 89 Japanese torpedo bombers fly in low, skimming just meters above the water. Their mission, cripple the U.S. Pacific Fleet before anyone can react. The pilots fly in tight formation, trained to the second, rehearsed for months. They expect no resistance, only sleepy sailors and unarmed battleships. Then, suddenly, the sky lights up. A deafening roar erupts from the harbor. Thousands of tracers arc into the air, slicing through the first formation. Pilot sea planes erupt and fire. No enemy in sight, no warning, just death from nowhere. Radios crackle in confusion. One second, they're locked into attack paths. The next, total chaos. Bombers try to break formation, pulling hard left or right. But it's too late. 60% are shot down before they can drop their torpedoes. The remaining planes release early, under pressure. Their torpedoes hit the water at bad angles, veer off, or sink without hitting anything. The USS Arizona survives. So do most of the other ships. Then the second wave arrives. 170 aircraft, dive bombers, high-altitude bombers, and fighter escorts. But this time, they come from above. And that's where the Sea Ram struggles. It can't reach them early. It tracks targets once they're close, too close. As the bombers dive, the Sea Ram opens fire again. Tracers fill the air. A few dive bombers are shredded on the way down, but most get through. Explosions ripple across the airfields. Fuel tanks ignite. Hangers vanish in fire. The fleet survives, but the base burns. Sea Ram is devastating, but only below a certain ceiling. And the second wave flies above it. What if Pearl Harbor had a Patriot missile battery? The Patriot missile system wasn't built to stop low-flying torpedo bombers. But give it the high ground outside Pearl Harbor, and it becomes a sniper for the sky. As the first wave approaches, the Patriots are armed and ready. But there's a problem. The incoming planes are hugging the sea. Too low. Too fast. Too early. Missiles fire anyway. Tracking. Adjusting. Racing downward. A few connect. Explosions bloom over the bay. But most of the bombers slip under the radar arc, literally. Out of 89 torpedo bombers, only three are taken out before the rest release their payloads. The Arizona is hit. The Oklahoma capsizes. The same destruction plays out, just with fewer attackers. Then comes the second wave. Dive bombers now scream in from above. 54 high-altitude bombers target fuel depots, airfields, infrastructure. This is what the Patriot was made for. The missiles rise like javelins, one after another, punching holes in the sky. Entire bomber groups disappear mid-formation. Radios fill with static. Commanders shout, but nobody answers. Some pilots turn back. Others never get the chance. Out of 132 attackers, 54 are destroyed before they can release their bombs. And the rest are scattered, disorganized. The airfields survive. The oil tanks don't burn. But the fleet is already crippled. Patriot came online too late. What if Pearl Harbor had an E-2D Hawkeye? The E-2D Hawkeye doesn't fire a single shot, but it changes everything. At 30,000 feet, the radar scans the ocean hundreds of miles out. And long before the first wave even sees the islands, the Americans see them. Alarms sound. Fighters scramble. AA guns are manned. Officers shout over radios. Ground crews race to pull tarp from aircraft. When the first formation reaches Pearl Harbor, the difference is clear. They expected silence. They get steel in the sky. Planes go down. Torpedoes miss. Anti-aircraft fire is chaotic but constant. The element of surprise is gone. Out of 89 torpedo bombers, only 50 reach release range. And even then, they're rushed. Sloppy. Less accurate. Fewer hits. Fewer explosions. More ships still floating. The second wave faces a prepared military. Fighter planes already airborne. Coordinated AA fire zones. Radar tracks every approach. Nothing gets in clean. 
Out of 132 attackers, nearly half never dropped their payloads. The result? Ships damaged, but still fighting. Airfields hit, but still launching. Pearl Harbor bleeds, but it does not break. So, CRAM saves the ships. Patriot saves the airfields. The Hawkeye helps save everything by giving time. But each one has limits. None are a magic shield. Still, even one modern system might have changed the outcome of Pearl Harbor. Which system would have made the biggest difference? CRAM? Patriot? Early warning? Drop your theory in the comments. Let the tactical debate begin.